The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So put on your pants, sit back and relax and tap your weave because we're going to be talking about inanimate horror objects. This is Oh, this is going to be fun. This is the dumbest <laughs> topic we've ever done. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Salty Nerd Podcast. I am your host today, Matthew Kadish, and uh, our regular host, Alex, is out uh, because he just had a new baby. Yay! Yay. Baby Thor! Baby Thor. Uh, we don't know the name yet, but uh, you know we can assure you it will be nerdy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am filling in for the hosting duties today, and with me, as always, is my fantastic panel of nerds, starting with the barbarian space viking himself, Matt Vader74. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm feeling feeling it today. Yeah. Is feeling this, is this you your sure? favorite topic? No. <laughs> <laughs> today there will be lots of salt, I think. Or I might just like shut down because I don't give a fuck. I, I don't know. Yeah, so, you know whatever. Stand in the corner. Like, this, be quiet. This is stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the love of my life, the uh, peanut butter to my jelly, the one and only Juju. -ju -ju. How you doing? Hi. Ambassador of estrogen. Ambassador of estrogen, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got a lot to talk about today, uh, in particular, three very odd movies, uh, the first of which is Slacks, about a pair of possessed pants that kills people, uh, the second of which is Bad Sofa, or Killer Sofa, I'm sorry, uh, which is about a, a chair that kills people, uh -huh. and the final of which is Bad Hair, which is about a weave that kills people. And uh, <laughs> I think it, it, it's important to note that uh, Tom picked uh, this topic and then he couldn't come <laughs> yeah, well, yeah i was this this was supposed to go down when i was on my break last month uh -huh. <laughs> and then that turd couldn't even show up for his own stupid topic uh -huh. and i had to do this uh -huh. yeah i'm not very happy about it yeah he, he kind of left us all holding the bag on, on this one uh so so we're going to be watching these uh these not only does he kill my love for star wars <laughs> and now he uh He's not a good person. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's, he's the me. destroyer of fun. He's the mm. destroyer of fun. He really is. Oh, Tom, the destroyer of fun. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, so instead of conspiracy, Tom, it's Tom, the destroyer of fun. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so those are the three movies we're going to be talking about today. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about them because they are ridiculous. Ridiculous. But before we get into that, we're going to take a break and hear a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Salty Nerd Podcast and today's uh, Inanimate Horror Killer Object Week. <laughs> uh, but, but, but before we get into these movies, um, take a minute to go check out saltynerdclub.com. That'll take you to our Patreon page and we have all types of cool stuff for our patrons over there. So if you want to support the podcast and help us out and um, you know uh, make it so that we can keep creating great content for you guys, Head on over there. It's just go to saltynerdclub.com. Takes you right to it. Uh, Vader, what are some of the cool things that they get when they subscribe? Oh, uh, what do we have? We have behind the scenes videos. We have outtake reels. We have uh, photo dumps that we throw up every week. Um, I am actually working on procuring some um, gift gift baggies, gift baskets for all our patrons. Some swag. Some swag. We're working on some swag. Which actually, I made some some headway on this week. Good. But uh, yeah, Excited yeah. So for so it. things are things, things are things are the gears are the gears are turning. They also we, get we, access to yes. a patron only section of our Discord server. This is true. Yes. Yeah. So we're growing that Discord community. But uh, enough of uh, the the pitches. Why don't we get okay. to the movies, which is what I'm sure everyone's here for. Um, so the first movie we're going to be talking about today is the movie Slacks, spelled S L A X X. And uh, thank, thank you, thank you <laughs> very much for the applause. Yeah. Um, so this is a movie about a pair of possessed pants, and we actually did a trailer reaction for this movie way back when, before it came out. And I was for it, and, and Vader was very much against it. <laughs> I, I, I remember you were like, "Like this looks stupid." <laughs> <laughs> I was correct. Yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah, you were wrong. I was wrong. so excited to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, so. Um, 
you know, when we were coming up with this theme or when I should say Tom was coming up with this theme, uh, this was kind of on the top of our list of things to check out because mm -hmm. it, it is on Shutter on Amazon, one of the Amazon channels. One of my favorite channels. Yes, which we subscribe to. So yeah, yeah, I took the seven day free trial this week. Yeah. Good for you, man. So yeah. I think I've already gotten charged for my month. Oh, so no. Whatever. <laughs> it's okay. Well, uh, Jude has gotten endless hours of entertainment out of that channel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually pretty good. They got like a very wide variety of it's selections. It's like an on. eclectic yeah. amount of horror movies. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Uh, but why don't you tell us a little bit about Slacks? All right. 2020 Slacks, rated TVMA with a runtime of 2 hours, 17 minutes. There's no budget. so <laughs> <laughs> No budget listed. It did yeah. have a budget. <clears throat> Here's a synopsis. Making a better tomorrow today. A clothing company pretends their brand is organic, ethically, ethically sourced, and cruelty-free in other expensive words. Turns out they're a bunch of liars. The spirit of a 13-year-old Indian girl who died in a terrible cotton shredder accident possesses the jeans made with that cotton, and she's out for blood and vengeance. Bollywood is the only weapon the store's employees have to distract the spirit because she loves that shit. But with a corporate climbing store manager who's worried he won't get a promotion if the boss finds out about the ghost pants, the store employees have more than one battle to face. Death by ghost pants or death by Craig, the robot king. <laughs> all right. So this movie, so first of all, the cotton that they're picking is like this. Um, it's a GMO. Yeah, it's a genetically modified um, kind of crop. Which, yeah. which, and that comes out later in the movie and everyone's like, oh. <gasps> Our stuff is GMO. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at the very um, beginning of the movie, there's like a sign where, you know, the people who are picking cotton and it, it's like a test field. Yeah, test field, mm -hmm. which, which basically <clears throat> lets you know that um, that the, this cotton is not your regular you know, type of cotton. This is mm -hmm. demon cotton. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what allows the woman's soul <laughs> who gets killed to be transferred into the, the clothing that's yeah. made later on. I believe her name is Kirat. Kirat? Uh, who knows? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Um, but uh, the um, the basic premise of this is, is that um, a kind of high end clothing company has created a new generation of pants that are unisex. Men and women can wear them, and they will automatically kind of fit your body type. Yeah, so, they're like thermo engineered to adjust to your body well yeah. they're, they're like uh the symbiote from spider-man yeah okay. it's, it's basically <laughs> one pair of jeans to rule them all yes uh, type thing and one uh, size for everyone exactly one size for everyone and uh this entire movie pretty much takes place in a clothing store which is kind of like an h&m or a abercrombie yeah. it's very h&m yeah, yeah. And, and everyone in the store is just like the worst <laughs> yeah. oh, the worst people ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like a super trendy store and it's just one of those things where, like, if you were in a mall and you walked into the store, you'd want to leave because it's so... I hate these kind of stores. Yeah. It's so pretentious. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hate... I loathe corporate culture. Yes. I hate it. Yes. I absolutely hate it. I, I Whenever you go to work for one of these, like, big companies, like, you know, on the Strip or for these casinos or in the malls or whatever in this town, it's you have to go to, like, indoctrination camp. Yes, you do. It's, 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 it's really insane. Mm -hmm. The the nonsense. Onboarding. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's nuts. And it's like, they're like a week long now. It's not, it's not an afternoon of, oh, you yeah. know, orientation, the bathrooms no. over there, fill out this paperwork, you know, it's like full on Nazi youth camp. I believe it's, it's crazy. One of the companies that I worked for that was very, um, high end. Um, I believe their onboarding process was like three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And this movie actually kind of pokes fun at oh, that. Oh yeah, I, I, that was the part I enjoyed the most about this movie was its absolute ripping of that, that culture. Yeah. Stuff that corporate culture stuff. It was it was good and it was way more spot on <laughs> than a lot of people understand and yeah. realize. There's a scene at one point, like <laughs> it's kind of in the beginning when this. So there's this new. New employee. She's never worked for the company before. It's her first day on the job. She's so excited because she like is a believer. Yeah, in yeah. This C is our main character, yeah. Libby. Right. So the company name company's name is CCC, and she is here for CCC. Yeah, she's drank drank the Kool Aid. Yeah. Um. So she comes. Well, she, well, she's she hasn't drank the Kool Aid yet. She just 
knows she likes the the well, well she's a true believer right like, like she's one of those these people who like she, she hasn't become jaded by the company yet but but like, but like the elon musk type she's a fan of the yeah, yeah the guy the who owns the owns yeah. the brand um yeah. he, she's like she worships him yeah so she starts her first day and she like go she like reports to the manager who uh is like supposed to like show her around or something he's like Ugh, what are you wearing <laughs> you're required to wear ccc clothing on and off like yeah, yeah. no matter what, like if it's your day off, you're still wearing CCC clothing. She's like, I am. I just bought these a month ago. And he's like, Ugh, those aren't in season. Yeah. You better <laughs> that go. That was like three seasons yeah. ago. <laughs> he's like, you better go get some new shit. So they force her to go spend money. She doesn't have on clothes that she's allowed to wear to work that day. Yeah, and it's funny because she's like, well, I can use my employee discount. So that's not this bad. And, nope. they're, and they're like, well, technically you're not an employee until midnight. And so your discount doesn't apply. It's just like so, so crappy. Spot Every, on, everyone in this store is awful. Yeah, like very early on, we're introduced to kind of like the, the section managers. So like you have Craig. I love the fact that his name is Craig. And he's like the store manager. And then he has his like little like mini supervisors that uh -huh. each have like a section of the store and each section is color coded. So you have like the yellow section, the green section. What do they call it? Like my my environment or something. Yeah, something like that. Something stupid. Yeah. yeah. Something very hippy dippy. Um, but um, and every one of these supervisors is like a total jerk. So like you have um, this uh, one guy, Lord, who's like the Asian guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's weird that his name is Lord, um, but <laughs> like, like he's like this super trendy Asian dude with glasses and, and very tech savvy. Hard again. Yeah. And uh, then you have um, like Hunter yeah. and Hunter is basically banging this like stocking boy and, yeah. and she keeps telling him to like meet her in like the locker room in like five minutes so she can, you know, uh, have like her, her, her quickie. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, then I think, um, there's this other girl, I forget her name, but she's like, uh, the one who puts on the pants first, uh, tall, Gemma. tall blonde Gemma. Gemma. That's her name. Okay. Uh -huh. And so like, these are like the three big kind of like store supervisors and everyone's on hand for the big reveal of, uh, of, of these jeans, of, of these jeans. And they're, they're called super shapers mm -hmm. or SS. And the, the symbol looks surprisingly like, well, very Nazi. Yeah. Very, yes. very Nazi, yes. uh, st stormtrooper type of, uh, symbol. Um, uh, which I I'm assuming was on purpose on purpose. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I don't, I don't think you put that in your movie with, without <laughs> knowing what it, what it looks no, like. No. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, one of these supervisors, um, on this night, um, when they're all basically getting ready and because like security is like so tight, um, the entire store is locked down uh, until it's supposed to open in early in the morning for this big clothing reveal. And they're having a kind of like Instagram influencer kind of sneak in at, you know, in the middle of the night. Uh, so the doors will unlock for like, just like 15 minutes. Uh, no, they have an hour. Well, she has an hour to do her stuff, but oh, the okay. doors unlock for 15 minutes. And then an hour later they unlock. Again. She was an influencer. I thought she was a model. No, she was a, like an, like an IG influencer. Oh, that makes so it even worse. The, the <laughs> store is completely locked. Nobody can get in and out, in or out. I don't think they have cell phone service either. Um, yeah, like, like, like this is the most secure clothing store I think I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, because like the unveiling of these jeans is something the whole, whole world has been waiting for. Yeah. And when the boss comes to visit to kind of give his rah, rah speech to the troops, <laughs> um, you know, you know, they have like this video that is all about like being eco-friendly and yeah. organically sourced and like all, all this stuff. And it turns out in the end, it's all bullshit. The big reveal is like they utilize child labor. They don't know who their contractors <laughs> are. Like, uh -huh. like all of it's GMO based. It, it, it's, it's all a lie. And it kind of makes me think that like, yeah, that's pretty much what all these clothing companies that claim this stuff like really sure. do. Yeah. Like they, they just don't care. Everything's so a lie. Everything that we, uh, that, that we use is probably made by slave labor. Probably. Including yeah. Everything that we're talking into and we're recording with on this table, mm -hmm. these stupid phones we I have. I probably put someone's hand, baby in my hair this these, morning. <laughs> these, these glasses I have on my head. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, we're fucked, man. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and so like one of these managers, she kind of sneaks, uh, the first pair of these su super shapers out of the um, the storage bin mm -hmm. and puts them on, and and <laughs> then she when she's zipping them up, she like nip nips her finger or something, and that gives the jeans its first taste of blood. <laughs> yeah, and and the blood is what kind of uh, powers up these these clothings. The uh, more blood it gets, yeah, the it more seems, powerful it becomes. Seems to be the theme of the day. Yeah, yeah. and bit. then she starts her period. Well, well, it was funny oh. because like uh, you know she puts on these jeans and they're super tight. 
And uh, and you made a joke when we were watching it. It's, it's like, ooh, girl, I hope you don't start your period on those things. And then like the very next scene, <laughs> yeah. she's like, oh, my period just started. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to the bathroom to d- take care of it. And like every single employee is like, Ugh, go plug it up on her way to the bathroom and then like her Craig the robot king notices that she's wearing the jeans and he's like on the walkie talkie and he's like what are you wearing and she's like I can't hear you I gotta go and, she, and he's like where are you going and she's like I gotta I gotta I'm gonna plug it up yeah I gotta go plug it up <laughs> so she goes to the bathroom to take care of it and she can't get the jeans off it won't let yeah. her take because, them because off. it's literally feeding on the period blood yeah oh God, and it stop. keeps it keeps getting tighter around her waist <laughs> and that's what kills her yeah, yeah. there's just like blood pouring out of her waist yeah, eventually the, the um the jean waistband cuts her in half uh-huh. uh, because it just clamps down on her waist so hard and and that's the first kill and the crazy thing about like these jeans is that they actually cover up their murders yes they very take, they well. take the time to hide the body and then it drinks up all the the blood that's splattered uh-huh. everywhere and Gross. you just see this pair of jeans like creeping across the floor like <laughs> yeah. mopping up all <laughs> inchworm <laughs> yeah inchworming across the floor yeah. like cleaning up sopping up all of the blood and, and it's super funny too and then like the the ss the super shaper symbol yeah they start, start it filling starts in. filling up with red yeah yeah it, it, it's like a, a power bar yes. of blood <laughs> on, on the jeans themselves and when it gets to like both s's are like completely full it, it's like become like fully self-aware yeah go go power so then, killer pants so then craig yeah. sends hunter right uh libby no, he sends Hunter first, the girl with the curly hair. Oh, okay. Um, he sends her to go find Gemma, and she just finds the jeans. And she's like, oh, I like jeans. Well, first of all, the, the jeans hypnotize her, if you remember this. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, so like she takes a look at like the, the SS symbol on the butt of the jeans, and then we get a shot of her eye, and like the jeans put some type of weird spell on her that makes her want to put the jeans on. Listen... Ghosts can do, they have powers that you don't understand. Yes, this is true. So, um, so then she puts on those bloody jeans. <laughs> and the jeans kill her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's one of those things where like the jeans, they kind of walk themselves. And so like they just walked her into like a thing on the wall that impaled her head <laughs> and killed her that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'm, fl- I'm flash forwarding a little bit, but it turns out all of the genes are possessed. Yeah. Yep. By, by the same soul. Yes. Because the thread, that the cotton that was that her absorbed blood, the soul. Her blood got mixed in with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have this one character who is Indian. Yeah. And she's listening. Shirti. Yeah, Shirti. She's listening to um, Indian music in her earbuds. And uh, the pants are about to sneak up and kill her. And then he, it, she, it, it. Well, Shirti starts singing yeah. along with she's like, like singing her her song, and I forget what it is, but it's some Indian song. And the pants starts dancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, the pants are big fans of Indian music. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it well, she's a thirteen year old girl. Of course, she loves Bollywood. Yeah, and and so um, before this happened, though, um, so like the influencer shows up, and by this time, the pants had claimed two lives. Um, and it had worked its way to the shelves in the main showroom. And so uh, what was the influencer's name? Uh, Peyton? Th- Peyton Jules? I thought the influencer was the first kill. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. That was the, the manager, Gemma. Oh. Um, so like they're, they're like. I paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think Peyton Jules is the IG influencer. Yes. And throughout the beginning of this movie, like we've seen clips of her stuff where she's like. I just got this in the mail from Amazon and it's so good and blah, blah, blah. And and like, you know, she's doing the typical like Instagram fashion influencer thing. Mm -hmm. And so she shows up and she has like her film crew with her, which is just like a girl with a camera and a guy with like a boom arm, Mm -hmm. which is way more equipment than I think 99% of of IG people use. You know, it's usually just a cell phone. Uh, So while she's, kind of hyping up the super shapers, the jeans literally like come to <laughs> come life off behind the wall, her. Yeah. Sneak up behind her, yeah. wrap the legs of the jeans around her neck and just break her neck. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly. And, and so they catch that on video. Uh-huh. And then once uh, um, Peyton is dead, the jeans go on a rampage and kill everyone who's in the store. Yes. And um, uh, 
Shruti? Is it Shruti or Shruti? Sh- Shruti, I Shruti. think. Okay. So she was in like the, the back, like restocking something. And she comes out and because she's listening to her music, she's just oblivious to all the dead bodies or, or the lack of people who are in the <laughs> showroom because the pant like hid all the, <laughs> all the dead bodies. Um, and uh, so sh- she's just getting a display ready and the pants are coming up behind her. And that's when we learn about the, the Bollywood music stuff. But before this, it's kind of funny because Libby, our main character, she discovers um, Gemma's body in the in the girls' restroom, and she goes and gets Craig. And Craig is like, "Oh, what a tragedy! I didn't think she was this depressed." And she's like, "What are <laughs> you talking?" He's like trying about? to spin it yeah. immediately. Yeah, he's, he's, spun, like, he's trying oh, to spin it as a suicide. That's a real shame that she did this to herself. And she's like, <laughs> she's like bent in half and stuffed in a cupboard. She, she's cut in half. <laughs> stuffed yeah. in the cupboard so like her legs are like up by her feet yeah. or by her head <laughs> she looks like two pieces of a mannequin yeah exactly and 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 she's like there's a killer on the loose and he's like oh please like this is not a the work of a killer uh-huh. and then like he kind of um kind of tricks her into helping him hide the body because craig is angling for a promotion up to corporate and right. he doesn't want to be stuck managing the store anymore so he's like a very ambitious kind of like snooty gen x uh Yep, Gen X. Yeah. Okay. I don't claim him. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's very millennial, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, millennial snob, whatever. Um, yeah, and there's another girl in the store who's angling for the same promotion, so they're kind of in competition with each other. Well, that girl um, is actually the owner's, I think, general manager. So, like, she has the job that he's angling for. Okay. And, and he, like, first chance he gets, he sends her to her death. Yeah. Well, you know, there there is a moment where he's like, don't go out there. But then, like, she's so sh- shitty to him that he, he's like, you know what? Go out go there. Out there. Go yeah. <laughs> and Have that, a good time. Yeah, that's kind of like his turning point to where he's like, I don't care who dies anymore. Uh-huh. Like, like um, you know, he's just in it for himself. Yeah, and then he actively starts trying to kill people. So this movie is actually, it's quite satirical. And I think, you know, they, they knew we're making a movie about killer pants. So, sure. yeah, they they kind of embrace the cheesiness of it. But I was actually pretty impressed with, like, the commentary on corporate culture yes. and, you know, like, the, the fakeness of all these people who work in, in this environment. Oh, I know these people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have met these it? people. No, <laughs> I have met these people. I, I'm... I have PTSD from these people. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd say it was a pretty accurate d- depiction? Yes. Okay. So, Vader, why don't you tell us what you hated most about this movie? Uh, <laughs> I just hate the premise. I just, I just, these kind of movies, just, they're, they're just dumb. Killer it's pants? A, yeah, killer pants. It's, it's, it's a silly premise. But, How dare you? But. I hope a pair of killer pants gets you. Yeah, I, I <laughs> just just an argument not to wear pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just not really into horror movies. Yeah, especially low budget. Really low budget horror. Yeah. I'd I'd rather watch, you know, um, what was that terrible mall movie we watched? Oh, Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall. Oh. Some, I'd rather watch something like that, which I think is like an '80s version of a movie like this. Yes, you, you know what I mean. Yes. it's the it's a B movie. Yeah, and, and this is this is like an '80s B movie premise, but made with, in a, with a twenty twenty yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if um, I had to put like a dollar amount to the budget of this movie, I'd say it's definitely less than a million. Yeah, you think? I I, I do. Yeah. Okay, but they probably just went to an H and M and they were like, "Hey, you want to be on TV?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I didn't. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't like. I don't like these kind of movies, but for what this movie is, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I I like the, like I said earlier, I like the bashing of the whole corporate culture nonsense, and I I liked it's uh it's it's a anti, kind of shitty world message. Mm-hmm. You, you know you know what I'm saying anti woke message. It, it, well yeah I guess anti don't be this person. You, you know because <laughs> like, yeah. um, there's a big part of me that doesn't like the fact that half of our products are made by people making 12 cents an hour in third world countries. It bugs me. It really does. But there's nothing we can do about it, really. It's like, are we supposed to like, not quit are we supposed to quit using things that and we, it doesn't that, matter like look how many people boycotted netflix when they didn't like yeah. that they had the cuties yeah, yeah. on there and netflix did not give two shits no like it doesn't matter it's like they have to use this stuff to live deep now yeah so it doesn't matter where it comes from and that's that's a that's sad but it's kind of true but uh the, the this movie making fun of all that yeah and 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 kind of bringing it to light in a, in a weird way 
I, I enjoyed that. What? And I, I, so I didn't have any problems with that whole, that whole message to it. Now the whole pants killing people. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> it, that was ridiculous. But uh, it was it was kind of fun. I, I understand what they were doing. They were they were having fun and, and giving us the stories with the message. So that's cool. Whatever. Not, what, am I ever going to watch this again? No, <laughs> <laughs> not even. I won't even recommend it to anybody. What but, I liked about it was the um, the way that they just sort of called attention to like the bullshittiness of. Mm -hmm of everything right like right now like everything is such bullshit there's bullshit everywhere and and this just sort of highlights mm -hmm. like everyone is full of shit everyone in this culture and yep. and and that's how that's just how it is we're well, all full of shit well you know what's funny is so they actually take the time to kind of give you some backstory about how these pants came to be possessed and yeah. it's kind of funny because at a certain point the pants decide to possess a mannequin Yes, and and so like it, it's like this full on like, kind of ghostly mannequin figure that's being controlled by these pants, uh -huh. and and it, it puts a bindi. Well, well, what happens is is that Libby and Shruti, um, they basically figure out that it responds, it, it can understand Indian language, and so uh, Shruti starts asking it questions about like you know what what are you, what happened, what are you looking for. And so it takes like the severed hand of the, the general manager that it's, it's so like early. missing a fingertip. So it's bloody and it starts writing on the wall in blood answers to these questions. And, you know, Shruti uh, translates them for us, the audience. And we basically find out the entire backstory of how these genes came to be possessed from the soul of a dead 13 year old, you know, slave labor worker and stuff like that. And it, it was a very ridiculous scene, but it was also kind of like disturbing at the, at the same time. And uh, Libby and Shruti kind of go to approach the genes and they want to help the genes get justice so that, you know, they can stop killing people. Justice for genes. Yeah, justice for genes. And then Craig, being an asshole, just runs up and sprays it with a fire extinguisher. And then the genes are like, okay, we're just going to go back to murdering everyone. Yeah, and um, like, spoiler, but uh, no one survives. <laughs> <laughs> Like Libby is trying to um, keep the store closed because like it's it's now time for the store to open. Well, well by this point, the genes like all the genes are alive. Yes. Oh, that's right. This is when they open all, the front all doors. of the genes declare yeah. war. Yeah. And, um, and and Craig had killed Shruti and then the genes killed Craig in like a very piranha like fashion. Where <laughs> they just kind of swarm him. And then like the next thing you see is just a skeleton yeah. like, like sitting there. And uh, and so like Libby's the only one left, and the jeans are all kind of like positioned in the store that look like display. And when the automatic doors open, when the locks kind of like come off in the morning, there are all these people out there. They're going to rush in, and Libby's trying to plead with the jeans. It's like, don't do this. Uh -huh. And she goes to try to keep the doors locked, but there's such demand from outside that the people like basically push her in and trample her. And she gets this massive head wound and dies. Uh -huh. um, but she's got the uh, the SIM card from the camera that has like the footage of the pants coming alive and killing people. So there's there's room for a sequel, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Oh, oh goody! Oh, can we please hope for that? <laughs> but but Jude, um, this is your type of movie. Yes. So it is. so what did you like about this movie? I thought it was hilarious, and um, I mean it's. It's obviously like by looking at it, it's obviously very 2020. So that's not specifically what I like. I like something that kind of looks a little shitty and is ridiculous. But for a movie made today in in like the genre of um, like a, like a B movie, I think it it did a, a really good job. And I thought it was funny. I thought it was really well written, and the story didn't really have any holes. Like I mean, yeah, there's a ghost in pants, but like they they. They tied up everything. Like there wasn't anything like, it, if you've already suspended your your disbelief enough to believe that there's a ghost in pants, like the story plays out well. Mm -hmm. Like there there's no holes in that. Um, yeah. Would you Would you agree? This is kind of like a modern day chopping mall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was really re re well written, and everyone who was playing these these asshole characters like nailed it. Yeah. Perfectly cast. Yeah. yeah. And like Libby is the only character who's like an actual nice person um but ev and everyone else in, in the in the movie is like a, a terrible person or just like mean and shitty and everybody does a really good job there wasn't yeah. any boobs in it i know i'm sorry 
Yeah, th- this was a boobless horror movie. It was. Uh, which is why it was rated TVMA. Right, because yeah. of the murder. But uh, we, we actually made a mistake. There was one survivor of this oh, movie. Oh, there was? Which was um, oh, Harold, the Oh, it was the, the guy that was waiting to... To, to bang... Yes. Um, what's her name hunter um, hunter yeah yeah so like he th- he's th- been waiting in the stock room yeah. wait, waiting for well no this entire movie he was like in the locker room waiting for her to show up so they could bang <laughs> and then finally like at the end of the movie once everyone's dead he just comes out and is like what's hey going on? yeah what's going on man? <laughs> <laughs> so i thought that was kind of funny and also during the credits they had this funny thing where they showed like a guy in like a like a green screen suit uh making the pants dance yeah and uh, so like uh, oh yeah it, yeah it was it was kind of like a funny way to get to see like how they they did the special effects which you know um even though this movie is very cheap i felt like the special effects of the pants were yeah were pretty cool and just watching the security footage of the pants crawling on the ground yeah what, it's what, really funny yeah it it, it it, it made us laugh, uh-huh. you know. Like this is not a scary movie. I I don't know that I would necessarily call this a horror movie. Well, yes, there's well, a lot it, of it's blood, gory, but um, it's more like a horror comedy. There's it, there's a lot of red gelatin flowing around on the floor. Yeah. yeah. So it it reminds me of a Roger Corman film, but but I I feel like this movie like it it knows that it's ridiculous mm-hmm. and it doesn't shy away from it. Yeah. But, but at the same time. Uh, it takes the, some of the characters pretty seriously. Like they know the concept is silly, but the characters are very grounded in this reality, which is almost like a kind of hyper stylized, satirical um, kind of. And it, it reminds me. I don't think they really are, though. I know these people. We, we could go down to the fashion show mall right now. And there's this exact same group of people working yeah. in half the stores. Well, w- what I it's, mean it's is, crazy. is that we just watched Death Race 2000. Yeah. And. To me, this movie has a very similar feel where it's very kind of satirical. It pokes fun at, you know, kind, mm-hmm. of, kind of like these institutions and, and these stereotypes. Um, so, I mean, that, that was my take on it. And I had a lot of fun watching yeah. this movie. Yeah. So, Jude, what was your favorite scene? Um, I think the scene that made me laugh out loud the most was the first time we saw the jeans, like, covering its tracks. <laughs> just like, soaking up the blood yeah so it's it's the, the first murder is in a bathroom stall and mm-hmm. it just cuts this girl in half and there's blood everywhere and then you just see these jeans like inchworming around just yeah. sopping up all the blood and like you they cut to the stall later and it's just like sparkling clean and, and we were like oh my god the <laughs> jeans know how to hide their murder and it was just so funny you, you, you know what was funny about these movies all of these movies i think did this Maybe not the last one we're going to watch, but it was when they tried to make faces and mouths out of these inanimate objects. <laughs> like with the pants, they pulled they pull the pants where you can see the, how you were. Yeah, the, 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 the butt the, pockets are like the eyes. Yeah, the, the eyes would pop up and he was all, you know, it was just, it was hilarious. It was, yeah. Well, also like kind of a running theme throughout all three of these movies that we watch is, is that the inanimate killer object feast on blood. They all want yeah. blood. And it's possessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that was pretty interesting. Okay, so like, let's give final thoughts and a rating. Vader, what would you give Slacks? Oh, final thoughts and a rating, huh? Okay, well, I have to admit, I I didn't hate this movie as much as I thought I was I'm going shocked. to going in. You know, and that's kind of the the, the way it usually works, right? It's uh-huh. like this is stupid, but eh, I laughed a couple times. <laughs> but but it was it was dumb. I thought for sure I was going to okay. get a ton of angry texts from you. Well, you, you didn't. But, <laughs> but this this movie is dumb, but um, I would have liked to have seen it with more of a 1980s kind of twist to it. You know what I mean? I do know what you um, mean. Yeah. I make it a little bit more B movie, even though that's hard to explain. Gratuitous. What... Yeah. Yes. There you go. Um, I like the message. I like the anti corporation. I like the anti, you know, uh, slave labor messages that, that this thing sent. And, I had a little bit of fun and it, it was but it was really stupid at the same time um i would give this movie if i had to grade it probably my highest grade of the movies today so i'm gonna go two and a half stars okay, oh, okay. <laughs> you, you know i mean it's worth checking out if you have the the the, the horror movie part of prime what's it called shutter shutter, shutter. shutter. if you have shutter check it out if, if yeah. you don't want to spend the 5.99 don't bother, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's, it was cool. I had a good, I had, I had a, I had a fun time watching it. That is a very so. meh review <laughs> from meh. you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Two and a half middle road. Yeah. Mm. You know. All right. So Jude, 
uh, final thoughts and what would you rate slacks? Okay. Um, final thoughts are, I agree with, with Vader that, um, I would, I, I just like that gratuitous eighties B horror movie mm -hmm. where everything is just like turned up a notch, like the gore, the sex, like, um, all of that. Like if they had flashed can, to can those I, two I, in the back room banging, it would, it would have been, been more 80s. And there would have been your booby mode moment. <laughs> You know, and this, this, I would have yeah. even accepted if, if, some side boobs. If this movie had boobs in it, what would you have rated? I'd probably it? give it another half star. <laughs> okay, so, so a solid three? Solid three. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. it didn't. So it's a two and a half. It, it was very, um, like of today, like we're not going to push boundaries too far. So, so for example, what was that movie we watched with Nicolas Cage in it? Oh, oh Jiu-Jitsu? Um, Ju no, 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 no. Uh, The fi Five Nights at Freddy's one. Yeah. But it wasn't that. Uh, <laughs> Willie's Wonderland. Willie's Wonderland. Wonderland. Yeah. Had gratuitous boobs in it. I gave it an extra half. No, it didn't. <laughs> it had a sex scene it, it, in it. it yeah, had yeah, a sex, yeah. sex scene. Yeah. For oh, no, it did? for no reason. Gr gratuitous eighties. No, movie she sex had scene. her bra on. It didn't have boobs in it because I remember it, when it we was talked. A, it was a sex scene. Okay. But it was close enough. Yeah. But it was, but it was there. You know. Yeah. It's like give us some gratuity in here. Give us give us yes. some something other than just the pants inchworming across the. The, the floor. Because yeah. However, even without that, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was a fun watch. Um, there, there were, there were times when I was watching this and it, and it surprised me and I like laughed out loud and, and yelled and, and it was, this is one of those movies where you can, um, just like watch and yell and be like, Oh no, girl, get out of there. And like, <laughs> just have fun with it. Um, so I do recommend it. And if you have shutter, definitely watch it. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's fun, and especially if you're like if you like if you like horror movies and if you like cheesy movies, you'll like it. Uh, if if you like uh, documentaries, you're not gonna like this. Uh, so I'll give it. Um, you know, I just think it was really well done. So I'm gonna give it based on inanimate object horror movies. <laughs> um, I will give it three out of five super shapers. Okay. So this is definitely, a, th this movie reminds me of the type of movies that me and my film school buddies would sit in our dorms and get drunk watching. Um, it very much is like a group experience type film uh, where like if you get a bunch of friends together and you're just looking to have a good time watching a stupid movie, this is like that type of mm -hmm. movie. And it's, um, it's it, I, I would agree with you guys that this is a fun film. And probably my favorite scene is the one that is, playing in our studio right now, which is basically Lord's death and, <laughs> and Lord's the Asian supervisor in the movie. And one of the things that we re that really stood out to us in the trailer was when basically the, the jeans used its zipper to cut off a finger. And that was Lord's like thumb basically. And we, we've all gotten like our fingers stuck in a, a fly before. You um, have? Everybody has? Well, I mean, like, I know I have. <laughs> I've never done that. Vader? Is that a thing that happens with dudes? How'd you get the beans above the frame? <laughs> <laughs> it happens, yeah. So, uh, but but the funny thing about this this um, scene is like, so it starts off the zipper takes off his thumb, right, and then the zipper cuts his hand off, <laughs> and then it cuts off his other hand, and then it decapitates him. So it's just like this ever escalating zipper death, uh -huh. uh, which I thought was hilarious. Um, I mean, it's probably the most gruesome death in the movie. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because the the pants actually put his body in like this little like cardboard box for the supervisor to find uh, later on, uh, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, The pants have like a, a, a sense of humor. But what's funny is like, this is a 13 year old girl yeah. committing yeah. these gruesome murders and then hiding the bodies and cleaning everything up. And you're just like, who is this 13? It's like the most- She went through a cotton shredder. You'd be pissed too. Uh, well, it's it's not about being pissed. It's about like like, this is the most bloodthirsty, like evil maniacal, 13 year old I think I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, it just She's so been happened. through something. Yeah, she has. Uh, but- um, Makes me I, not wanna make anybody in India mad at me, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, uh, because this movie was so fun, I, I am probably gonna give it like, you know, a solid three employee discounts out of five. Mm -hmm. um, just because like, I did have a good time watching this. Yeah. Th so this are all right there in the yeah. same area. I yeah. think it's, it, it's a movie that you can have fun watching by yourself, but it's definitely a movie you should watch with a with a group of friends. Or drunk, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think everything <laughs> is better when you're drunk. <laughs> um, but uh, 
you know, this is a low budget movie. It does remind me of like a Roger Corman film, yeah. except a little bit better produced, but you can tell it was all shot on digital. It was shot in one location, all no name actors. Um, it, it, the lighting is very kind of flat TV, cheapy look to it. Um, and I, I do think that they probably were able to make this movie for under a, a million bucks. Mm. Um, or at least in that range. So but whatever money they did spend on it got made on the pants, got spent on the pants. <laughs> yeah, probably. So. All right. So that was our discussion of slacks. We, I think we all kind of generally agree that uh, people can check this one out and have fun watching it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next up, we are going to be talking about killer sofa. But before we do that, a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, welcome back. And uh, before we get going into our next movie, I just want to remind you guys to go check out saltynerdstore.com. We have a lot of great swag up there, a lot of fun t-shirts that uh, you can uh, purchase to not only show off your geekiness when it comes to movies and pop culture, but also help support the show. Uh, Jude, what are your favorite shirts up on saltynerdstore.com? Hmm. Um, I, I like the ones with just our logo. I like those. And then I like the... Um what is it, Mur Murtaugh and Riggs for president? Yeah. I, I like that one, too. Uh, Vader, you're actually sporting one of the Oh, this is, this is my favorite shirt. This yeah. is my shirt. This the Barbarian Space barbarian Viking space shirt. Viking, yeah. yeah. You and I are not wearing nerdy shirts today. No, not today. I, I couldn't settle on what would <laughs> go appropriate with your I'm wearing your a hockey ones. shirt today because my knights are in the playoffs, so I will be supporting my team. Yeah, but we have a lot of great shirts up on there that you guys can go check out. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to help support the show and get some great swag in the process, please go to saltynerdstore.com and check it out. All right, guys. So our next movie is going to be Killer Sofa, which is another Shudder original film. And I actually take umbrage with this movie because it's not a sofa. It's, I know. It's a, that well, bothered me. It's a Lazy Boy recliner. Yes, yeah. it's just a recliner. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the, the title is a little misleading. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just before, I had I took a picture of my recliner yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so if you're expecting a couch and you're you get triggered by things like this, just know that it's not a couch. <laughs> you want to show the people? Oh my god, that's Sh great! Show the camera. <laughs> that's my recliner. That's exactly what it looks like in the yeah. movie, except it's blue. So, so, so th this movie is. I put, I put eyeballs on it. So. <laughs> This movie is basically about a possessed recliner, yes. kind of lazy boy chair, um, and uh, uh, hilarity ensues. So, Jude, why don't you tell us a little bit about Killer Sofa? Okay. 2019 Killer Sofa, unrated, with a runtime of one hour, 21 minutes. And here is the synopsis, because there was no budget information on any of these movies today well this was a, this was a low budget horror movie made in new zealand yes i, I yeah. think they probably had a budget of a hundred thousand dollars to make this movie yeah all right here we go i thought it was a new zealand movie because had a very peter jackson thing going on well everybody had an, a, a kiwi accent <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they also said new zealand <laughs> in it, so okay francesca is the great 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 granddaughter of some evil bitch who had powers of seduction and murder Frederico is some poor schlub obsessed with Francesca and dabbling in the dark arts. They're a match made in heaven till Fred dabbles a little too hard. He has his buddy chop off his legs so he can fit himself inside a recliner chair possessed by the de book, an evil spirit that also happens to be obsessed with Francesca. Two New Zealand cops try to protect Francesca and get to the bottom of why everyone around her is being murdered. All right, so we, we just talked about how the title for this movie is kind of misleading yes and it turns out that the original title of the movie was called my lover my lazy boy <gasps> i like that oh my god and they were afraid that lazy boy being a trademark furniture company oh. would sue them if they used it so then they transitioned to a more stephen king type title called the furnishing and uh i don't like that yeah uh, apparently no one did which is why they basically uh, settled on killer sofa which I think people kind of laughed when they brought it up, even though it's not a sofa. And so they, they just went with that. Uh -huh. Also, the poster for this movie I was is just going to say, yeah. I, I'm really upset about oh, the poster. Oh, I haven't seen the poster. Because the poster tells a completely different story. Somebody bring that up real what, quick. What this, so this the, the poster about. basically, okay, the, the, the sofa or chair, I should say, in, in the poster has like a mouth with like sharp teeth and, and evil eyes. It looks very demonic. And that is not what the killer sofa in this movie looks like at all. Um, uh, in fact, uh, so they only had one. Okay, yeah. Yeah. 
you, you want to show the oh man the I, I dig that poster i kind of want it yeah it's a cool poster yeah too bad that's not in the movie <laughs> yeah uh very rarely do horror movie posters end up panning out uh in the movies yeah which is also very roger corman but what's funny about this movie is so they spent 64 dollars on getting this on the whole movie on, well on the chair <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. And, uh, and it was basically the only chair that they had for their production. And they were originally supposed to do a lot more with the chair where it would like jump out of a window and like land on people <laughs> and like spew blood or something like that from, from its mouth. And um, because they only had one chair, they were like, well, we, we can't do all the stuff we want to do with it because, you know, if it gets ruined, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so it we was, don't have another sixty five dollars for another chair. <laughs> exactly. Well, it, well, that that's like a hundred bucks in New Zealand money. So like that was expensive. And what's what's really weird is how expensive recliners are to begin with. Yeah, so, and I think this was like a yeah. second hand one too. I'm yeah. certain it was a second hand <laughs> recliner. But the the great thing about this movie is that the recliner they literally have like eyes on the recliner mm -hmm. the big so buttons. The, the, yeah. buttons the buttons are its eyes, and, and, it, then and like it, it the, has a face. The crease. In, in the back of the chair is like its mouth. So it's like, it makes expressions. Well, if you if you look at those, if you look at my chair that I just took a picture of and showed you, you can see a face. It's it's really kind of funny how, how it looks. Like a big derpy Muppet <laughs> is, is what it looks like. It, that, that's what it is. It's a yeah. derpy Muppet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the basic story of this is that we, we have a, a woman uh what's her name francesca francesca derpy new zealand chick right. yeah yeah so so <laughs> for, for for whatever reason she has this power to make people just become obsessed with her well she doesn't she's not making them it yeah. just happens so it, she's just this girl like going about her business going about her day going about her life and like everyone that she comes in contact with she's like it happens with every man and sometimes women they get obsessed with me and i don't know why yeah and it, and she's a very like kind of nice sweet girl and um she's had a string of like very kooky kind of relationships with with crazy people mm -hmm. and it's kind of funny like like about midway through the movie one of the band members uh for like the, the group that she dances for uh he shows up and he's like trying to convince her to marry him and have his babies and he's like i have very strong bones <laughs> we could have very strong babies um and he was probably the creepiest one in in the movie yeah but it's it's funny because she has a current boyfriend and she likes him because he doesn't, he's not obsessed with her, but everyone knows that he's gay. Uh -huh. And and so like, except for her, she, she's kind of in denial about it. She's like, oh my God, I love how much you don't like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and of course he's like one of the first uh, victims of the killer so far. You know what? I'm sorry, but this guy had it coming. He's the dumbest person in this whole movie. So he goes out for like a bachelor party or something. He's out all night and she's in the house by herself. And then when she wakes up in the morning, um, there's like candles leading to the chair with like flowers and chocolates and, and cookies or something on the arms of the chair. Obviously the chair did that. So then boyfriend walks in and she assumes that he did all that for her. She's like, oh my God, you're so sweet, but you didn't make any cookies for yourself. And he's just like, huh? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then he looks down and sees like this, like, um, like, pathway of candles and all of this stuff that he obviously didn't do and she obviously didn't do it and then he's just like yeah i i did that and doesn't think to himself oh shit somebody was in our apartment and he just like goes about his day and then he gets fucking murdered he had it coming was he, the, he he's the first kill right yeah so well was, was, well was he the, he was the one that was like the 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 roadrunner moment kind of thing where the chair would like sneak up a little closer to him and he'd turn around and stop yes then he'd go back and the chair would get a little closer. Yeah. So he's and like, he'd go, oh, turn around and stop. And the chair's like 12 feet closer to him. I think it he's was like, like, it was like I'm, I'm, I'm going through this thing. I'm going, what the fuck, dude? He's dumb. <laughs> like, he deserves to get murdered. He, he, just, he's your typical horror movie victim. It was yes. just the dumbest thing. Yeah. I, it, I hated this movie. Dude, oh my God, I love the, this the movie. Best, I, the, I hated the best this part movie. of the best parts of this movie is when the sofa is menacingly staring at people <laughs> uh, throughout yes. the, through the windows. So she has this best friend. I think her name's Nancy in the movie. Uh, I don't know. For the for the purpose of this uh, <laughs> show, whatever. we're going to call her Nancy. Um, <laughs> TJ? Is that her name? No, that's the boyfriend. Okay. Best friend, Nancy. Best friend. 
What's up, Nancy? Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So she's got this best friend and she's like, oh, um, I don't know. I'm having a bad night or I'm scared or something or like somebody was murdered. So can you come over and hang out with me? So Nancy comes over and they hang out and then um, she leaves. And when she's getting into her car, she looks up and the chair is staring at her <laughs> like through the window and she's like, Ooh, that chair is fucking creepy. And she like <laughs> gets her car and leaves. <laughs> and it's the funniest expression on the chair. Cause, it really cause is. it's not scary Cause at you all. You can see that chair is like fucking like you. <laughs> <laughs> and then at one point somebody else is like out on the street and getting in their car and they look up to, um, Francesca's balcony and the chair is on the balcony <laughs> staring at them like half, half out the door, like we get out of here. <laughs> and this movie actually starts off with a pretty gruesome scene where like a guy is sawing off another guy's legs and we don't have a lot of context for it. Um, but we know that in the next scene when we're, where we're introduced to Francesca. Uh, so we have our two uh, heroes of the movie, which is Detective Bob Gravy. <laughs> gravy. <laughs> Good gravy. Yeah. And, and his partner, uh, I forget her name. Something um, grape. <laughs> Yes, great. You're not even joking. I know. That's great. <laughs> the last name was Grape. Yeah, Gravy and Grape. Gravy and Grape. That's awesome. New Zealand detectives, Gravy and Grape. And uh, they're basically looking for this guy who got his legs cut off because they found like a, a severed foot that a dog was like gnawing on. And it belongs to a former boyfriend of Francesca's. And I guess um, at a certain point, he set up a furniture delivery to her new apartment. And the people who are delivering the furniture, they go to the storage locker, uh, they find the, the sofa that's just kind of chilling out there. And while, it's, while they're moving it, it kind of mangles one of the mover's hands in a very weird way. And then they deliver it to the wrong address at first and they take it to um, Arthur's um, pawn shop. And Arthur is the best friend's booby uh, grandfather. Oh, is he the old dude that? Yes. With the beard. He's like kind so, of a psychic or something. So, so, so he he's like a hippy dippy Jewish rabbi uh -huh. uh, who runs a um, secondhand store, and he's he got, also he's got an awesome beard. Yeah, and he also happens to come from a long line of psychics, and they thought it it kind of passed over him, but when he touches this the sofa, he has like a vision, and he's convinced that the sofa is evil, but he doesn't know who got it and so he's trying to track it down and it's kind of funny because like like he's the worst actor in, in this movie <laughs> um first of all and secondly like there's a scene where he calls up his dad who has the gift and i don't even know how old his dad's supposed to right. be because this yeah. guy is like old uh -huh. and his dad just starts berating him about like how how he's not a psychic and how worthless he is and this is the one guy who actually kind of could possibly stop the evil spirit that has possessed this, but it's through him that we get a lot of the backstory about the possession of, you know, like what, what exactly is going on. Um, so Vader, what did you hate about this movie? <laughs> Everything. I, I didn't, I couldn't tell what was going on. The, the story was convoluted. The, I just, I, I can't even tell you how much I hated this movie. It was just dumb. It was, it, it made no sense. I didn't, I, it didn't set up the story good for me. I couldn't tell who I was supposed to root for, who I wasn't, who, you know, I, I kept on waiting for this thing to grow teeth because <laughs> the poster said there was teeth in it. And it was, it was just a silly, stupid movie. And I, I just, I did not like it. I didn't enjoy it. Um, it was just an hour and a half of my life. I want back. So the story yeah. behind this is that back in like the 1800s, I think there was a couple that um, basically they were madly in love. They were kind of like Bonnie and Clyde. What yes, they would do but is with murder. Yeah, they, they would they would use Oleander to murder people. Like the wife would like seduce someone and they um, kill them, and um, eventually they got caught. And the wife, um, what, what was her name? Start with a V. Uh, Valerie. Valerie. So the wife Valerie killed herself, but she was in close proximity to one of their servants. So her soul got, tr got transferred to that servant and was kind of trapped within her body, even though like she could, couldn't take her over. And so this killer woman's soul gets passed down to every female generation. in that generation yeah. uh, until it ends up in Francesca. And so Francesca has the soul of this murderous temptress 
in her body. Yeah. And the soul of her husband uh, has gone through like the same process. And eventually like his goal is to rescue his bride and, and be reunited with her. And so he does this by possessing the sofa yes. and eventually tracking down Francesca and getting to the point where um, Valerie can take over Francesca's body and then he can transfer his body into someone. I, did, his I didn't pick up on body. any of that watching this movie. Well, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you like it more? No, <laughs> not at all. So Jude, what did you think of this movie? I loved this movie. This, uh, I watched it twice, once just for pleasure. And then um, when we were watching it this week, we watched it again. And I had I hadn't watched it that long ago because it came out in 2020, I think, um, 2020 or 2019. And uh, I forgot how funny it was. Like we were watching, I think we just watched it last night and I was just like laughing so hard at the ridiculousness of it. And that's the, this is the kind of movie that I personally like. I like a movie that's so ridiculous and so cheesy and you can just like, it like just open yourself up to the ridiculousness of it and nothing makes sense and nothing, no, nothing is believable and nothing is realistic, but that's like, that's the charm of it. And this whole movie was ridiculous. There's a, a, a possessed sofa. And then what turns out like, um, some guy that had been obsessed with her, um, the Frederico guy, he has his legs cut off so that he can fit inside the sofa and then the sofa ends up in her house so that he can spy on her. So he's technically the one who's been killing all of these people, but he, I guess, didn't realize that the sofa was already possessed when he got in there, which makes him, I guess, even crazier. And for some reason, his face is off. Well, so there's this thing <clears> called <throat> a debuk, 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 which is basically a type of demon that can inhabit stuff. And the idea is that um, Valerie's husband, mm -hmm. the, the killer guy, he's a debuk and he possesses people, um, you know, um, throughout the ages. Yeah. And he possessed this guy's body, which kind of forced him into the sofa. And then through being in the sofa, the sofa became part of the debuk, debuk okay. type thing. Okay. So it, it started off in the human's body, but then it transferred into the inanimate object. Yeah. So at the end of the movie, we get the <laughs> reveal. Was just shaking his head. <laughs> we get the reveal that Frederico has been inside this chair the whole time. So they kill him and they think everything's fine now. Well, <clears throat> well, it turns out the sofa was actually possessed too. Um, so Francesca goes into the bathroom and her great, 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 whatever, Valerie ends up taking over her body. So now Franche Francesca is now evil and she's like an evil siren seduct seductress. And the, new, the male cop, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we, we gave you that, that straw to keep you quiet later. <laughs> <laughs> Vader it is crazy straw. Um, so the male detective, Gravy, he <laughs> stop making noise while we're trying to talk. It sounded like you were pissing uh, instead of pouring a drink. Now that I've already missed it. Yeah, up. just finish. Yeah. Make your beverage. Go ahead. <laughs> um, are you done? I'm done. Okay. So the male cop, Gravy, he has taken a liking to Francesca. Yeah, he's fallen under her spell. From the very, very beginning. So he's becoming obsessed with her. And you know what's funny is like his partner, Grape, keeps trying to like yeah, hook up with him. She keeps trying she's very to thirsty. fuck this guy. Yeah, she's and very he's thirsty. like, like, yeah, I want, I, want to, I want to fuck, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> gravy and Grape. I don't gravy get and it. Gravy and Grape, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so he come, at the end of the movie, he comes to Francesca's apartment uh, for a date. And Francesca poisons him because she's now the evil Valerie. She poisons him, kills him. And then the spirit from the sofa or the chair uh, goes into gravy. So now the couple, the, the demon couple mm -hmm. is now reunited. And, and they end up killing Grape. You see, I yes. never once saw that she was evil. I must have just not have been no, paying Valerie attention. No, Valerie is evil. Because Valerie was the great, great, great old witch that killed herself. Okay. She possesses this um, Francesca. Just, just, at the this end. movie is very confusing. It's very uh, confusing. I, I loved it. I, I didn't find it confusing. No. Um, well, personally. I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are a couple things that I want to touch on in this movie. And the first okay. is, is the uh, sexy recliner scene. 
Yes. You remember that? Yes. Oh, where she stuck her fingers in the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. she is I was like, fondling Whoa. that chair. Yeah, you, you want to describe to our listeners what the, all that's about? Jim? It was like an erotic, non-masturbatory sofa sex scene. Yeah, so basically our heroine, Francesca, is reclining in the killer sofa, and a red light comes on, <laughs> and she starts like, like just writhing in the seat. Uh-huh. And she's like the like the button on the side that makes the foot come up, the foot part come up. She's yeah. like fingering, fingering it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of like in there. In there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> she's like three fingers deep in that yeah. thing. And wow. th this is a long scene. This is like, this goes, goes on, on for, like for a while. A couple minutes. Yeah. And it's just like her kind of like writhing around sexually in, in this chair. And basically it's the idea that whatever's possessed this chair is kind of like, Sexy. You know, yeah, putting the moves on her. It's like a vampire putting, you know, like clamoring or something like thrall. that. Thrall. Yeah. She's under the thrall She's of the chair. The and at a certain point, somewhere, you know, towards the middle of the movie, uh, so the, the chair kind of moves and she sees it move and it freaks her out. And so she runs to her best friend's place across the street. And, um, you know, she's like, can I stay here? I'm just so freaked out. And her best friend's like, sure. And I, I think her best friend is TJ. No, 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 Maxie. That, Maxie. Okay. So her best friend, Maxie, is trying to comfort her. And later on that night, she's like, can you go check and make sure my, my chair is okay? Because she's concerned about her, her chair all of a sudden. Yeah, the devil chair that you fl like yeah. just fleed from. Fleed? Fled. Fled, fled from. Uh, you, I just want to, I, I mean, he's still a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so she convinces Maxie to go to her apartment. And while Maxie's there, she witnesses the... Um, the sofa getting rid of the body of the creepy guy with the strong bones. Oh, we got to talk about the creepy we, guy. Yeah, we, we will. <laughs> but um, so like the, the the killer sofa sees her and chases her into the bathroom in order to get away. She jumps out the bathroom window, which is on the second story, and lands in a garbage can. And we don't see her for the rest of the movie uh -huh. until the very end when we, she climbs out of the garbage can with like pieces of glass <laughs> sticking out of her sticking head. Sticking out of her forehead. Yeah. And, and, and Detective Gravy, who, you know, found the other body, but didn't find her. Yeah, so Detective Gravy finds the body of the creepy guy yeah. right next to the dumpster yeah. that Maxie's <laughs> in, and they just quit. Yeah, and They're Max like, oh, found a body, Ma case closed. Maxie was was knocked out in that dumpster for like three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she shows up like three and days later. And everybody just assumed that she was dead, but nobody yeah. was looking for her body. And she's got like pieces of glass sticking out of her head, and Gravy's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, no. Obviously no. fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like she's definitely not okay. Um, but it was just kind of funny because like they needed to get rid of her and they're just like, oh, we'll just have her show up at the end, uh -huh. um, which I thought was funny. But uh, Jude, why don't we talk about the uh, the, the creepy creeper yes. death scene? So the creepy guy who it turns out is Maxie's cousin. I feel like I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's awesome, Vader. It's not awesome. So the creepy guy, <laughs> uh, I forget his name, Charles? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so he is obsessed with Francesca and he is trying to get her to marry him. And she's like, no, you're gross. I don't want to marry you. Yeah, that he, yeah, he keeps talking about like how strong their babies will be because yeah, he has strong yeah. bones. That's and his she, big selling point. She's like, not not for me. And and he's like, but he says something so creepy like, you got to let me in or you got to come around or something like that. It was so very like, listen, you're either going to come willingly or not. I don't give a shit. Yeah. And he, he, he's like, I'm giving you this opportunity before I get really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you think this is peak creep. It's not. I, I'm wondering if this is how New Zealand men go about picking up Hot. Their ladies. Yeah. You know? Anyway, so she leaves and she just leaves him there like at her front door and he breaks into her house and puts like cameras in yeah, every put, room. Put spies ca spy cameras in there yeah. so he can like, Curve on her. Yeah. Meanwhile, the, <laughs> the chair's watching this whole thing go down. And it's funny because like as he's installing these like hidden cameras, the chair's head moves uh, depending on where he is in it's the room. It's definitely eyeballing him. <laughs> and so then he goes into Francesca's bedroom and he sees her bra laying on the bed and he like is overcome with yeah. sex and horniness. He gets in her bed under her covers. He gets underneath her covers and he makes love to her undergarments. Oh my God. And while this is happening, um, <laughs> the chair comes in and murders him with an iron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's probably the most creative death scene uh, in, in the film, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. It was pretty funny. It's great. Uh, so, Vader, did you 
have any favorite scenes in this movie? Vader, what do you actually remember from this I, movie? I don't know. I guess I feel like I fell asleep. Um, no, not really, dude. I mean, I kind of laughed a little bit at the uh, scene where the douchey boyfriend got got killed with with the chair sneaking up behind him. <laughs> And then his mom, was, so he, he leaves because he knows that something's up with the chair, which is also a dick move because he knows that somebody was in the house and then he gets hurt and then the chair attacks him and he's just like, I'm just going to go to my mom's house. And he doesn't, he doesn't think about her at all. He's just like, you stay here with your fucking creepy chair. I'm out. And the chair goes to that guy's mom's house and kills him there. And his mom is like trying to vacuum and she gets like his eyeball sucked yeah. up in the vacuum. And yeah. that's how his mom discovers that he's dead. And, and nobody seems to care either. Like, like, I don't, well, no, because he's a dick. Well, I, I, I don't, think I, I don't was, even think, I think she I was completely police. checked out by this point. It's not I that really, far really into the movie. Was. I think I was completely checked out. I was like, oh my God, this is the worst movie ever. As soon as he found out that Cher didn't have teeth, he was like, fuck this movie. I kind of was. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know I what this, like, this movie reminds me of is, is bad taste. I was not like, expecting, it, it, I was expecting no, something completely no. different Tr with this Stop movie. trying to make a bad taste into well, something well, well, better well, no, than no, it, it is. It, it, it's one of those New Zealand kind of like quirky uh, uh, sci-fi At least I stuff. watched this movie. <laughs> that right there. I got 20 minutes into bad taste and I said, fuck you, Kadish. I'm not watching this. I wish I had shit. done that because I'm still, I'm still. It was bad. Healing from that. I well, think. I'm glad I did turn it off because. Yeah. That bad taste is fantastic. <laughs> and then this movie kind of reminds me of it. Mostly How dare just you? because it's. Because they have the same accents. Well, it, it, it's. <laughs> yes, it's, that's it's, literally it. It's low budget New Zealand genre filmmaking. And that, that's kind of like the, the connection you there. You need to quit. <laughs> that's not accurate. That right there makes me like this less than I did a minute ago. You guys are going to go on the uh, New Zealand trip for your honeymoon, right? When, no, I want to go to Scotland. Oh, okay. Going to go Peter Jackson world tour. <laughs> <laughs> go live in a hobby cave for a night, right? A night? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let's do final thoughts and ratings. Vader, what are your final thoughts oh, of I, Bad I, so or Killer Sofa? And Don't bother watching this <laughs> turd. This movie is a piece of garbage. It's awful. It's, 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 it's of all the movies we've watched for this show, it's top three worst movies. Oh ever. my. It's, it's, it's a one star shit fest. Absolute one star shit fest. No, no redeeming quality. Nothing. There's nothing, nothing in this movie I like. I, I'm, I'm angry at you guys for making me watch it. <laughs> Be angry at Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's awful. It's terrible. Okay. Waste you of, waste of, waste of time. Jude, final thoughts and ratings? I disagree with everything Vader just said. <laughs> I think that this movie is hilarious. And like, if this is the kind of movie that you like, like you like a cheesy horror movie, this is it. It's ridiculous. It's low budget. And and that for me, that's a charming thing. Like the story is bullshit. <laughs> and the writing is okay the acting's bad the acting's terrible <laughs> and, that's and what, it looks like it was shot on a cell phone yeah that's what makes it so glorious to me like it's so ridiculously over the top funny in its attempt to be scary and and i i loved it um this is my favorite movie of the day uh, or, or of the week whatever i give this um for a oh killer God. inanimate object movie I give this a four out of five killer sofas. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had more fun with this movie than I probably should have. Um, cause it is a dumb movie, but I feel like it's a movie that knows it's dumb mm -hmm. and just kind of plays into that. Um, it's not a movie that takes itself very seriously. Like every time the killer sofa is doing creepy stuff, uh, you know, for a fact that everyone on set was probably just giggling their butts off. It's when so they were funny. Doing it. Yeah, it, it really is. The story itself is pretty dumb. Um, and everyone knows that, the story is dumb and the acting's bad and everything about this movie is bad. And I think everyone who worked on it knew it, that it was bad. And so they just kind of leaned into it. Yeah. And, and in a way, cause we always say that the best bad movies are the most genuine. Yes. Like, like they're the ones that like, kind of like, you know, are like, they don't try to be more than they are, but they embrace what they are. And this movie is a perfect example of that where it's just a very genuinely bad movie. Um, and it doesn't make any bones about it. Like yeah. it knows like it's a killer sofa. Uh -huh. They had one $65 sofa that they tried to make look evil and threatening yeah. and didn't succeed at. And I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. 
And it's like the first movie that, that we talked about today. Slack. CCC was like corporate, we're high end, we're very niche. And this movie is the thrift store equi equivalent of that. Yeah, it, it's the low budget Kiwi equivalent. Yes. And um, you could tell like the people who made this were just like having a good time making it. Yeah. You know, so like overall, I would probably, you know, I mean, this is a one star movie, but I would give this. <laughs> personally from okay. the amount of fun i had watching it with you uh, probably like three lazy boys out of five right like it, it's on par with slacks in terms of like bad movie entertainment yeah for me. it's still very entertaining yeah all right guys so that was our review of killer sofa uh, i think overall vader aside uh, we, <laughs> we tend to recommend it it just pushed me aside <laughs> well you not know, a two me. out of three two out of three members of this podcast approve <laughs> yeah i think salty would be with me on this one oh, I agree. oh he would definitely I be agree. with me. yeah yeah i mean none of these movies i i think he's glad that he's not here for this week I, i'm kind of pissed that i am <laughs> yeah again blame tom uh, but that was our review of killer sofa and next up we we're going to be talking about bad hair but first a word from these sponsors hey everyone welcome back and uh, before we get into our final movie of this episode i just want to remind everyone to go and sign up for our discord server uh, we've got a great community going on over there and we'd like to welcome more people to come check it out and now you can just go to saltynerddiscord.com that'll take you right to our discord server uh, so uh, vader what type of stuff happens over on discord oh gosh um we 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 chit chat and talk about movies and TV shows and memes and and stuff. You know, uh, Salty has uh, he does viewing parties over there from time to time. Yeah, some watch parties where yeah, you know, he yeah, needs just, to watch stuff for the the show, and he just invites some of our Discord people yeah. to come and join him. And uh, we also got uh, it's a it's a small community right now, but we want to we want it to grow. Mm -hmm. So come yeah, and, and we've got a patrons only um, section yeah. of the discord and it's a good, great way for people to get in touch with us and talk to us about uh, movies and pop culture and what they'd like to see on the show and uh, you know some theme ideas for future episodes it's a it's a, it's a different way to interact with us directly mm -hmm. if you're not on twitter or any of the social medias or, or only fans <laughs> yeah yeah it's a lot of fun all right guys so go check out saltynerddiscord.com that'll take you right to our discord server all right, so our final movie of the day is Bad Hair. Jude, what is Bad Hair all about? All right, Bad Hair, 2020 Bad Hair, unrated, <laughs> uh, with a runtime of one hour, 42 minutes. <laughs> Which is like <clears throat> 42 minutes too long. <laughs> Set in 1989, all Anna has ever wanted to be is a VJ, a video jockey. VJ. Yeah. Um, she works at Culture Channel behind the scenes where everyone loves her ideas but hates her hair. When her boss gets replaced by Vanessa Williams, she has an opportunity to host her own show. But first, you got to do something about that hair, girl. She appeals to the hairstylist at, a very, at the very expensive Virgie's Salon, the place where all the elite women of color get their weaves done. She picks out some haunted tracks and has them sewn in and starts experiencing some weird dreams and the occasional bloodlust. Realizing the hair is possessed, she tries to remove it, but the hair kills anyone who tries to help her cut it out. And all those elite women with weaves have possessed hair too, so she's outnumbered. When her boss and friends trap her in an office, she lights one last cigarette, thinking this is the end for her, when she suddenly remembers the one warning the stylist gave her when she did her hair. Never get the hair wet. Looking up and seeing the sprinklers in the ceiling, she triggers the water spray with her cigarette lighter just as the hair is closing in. The water destroys the hair like the Wicked Witch of, the, of Oz. She's able to escape. Back to a simple life of covering up her natural hair with scarves, because it's still ugly. And they all lived happily ever after. But wait, evil James Vanderbeek is growing more possessed hair on his plantation, <laughs> and there's a lot of it. The end. All right, so um, Jude, for us men who don't know anything about weaves, can you kind of give us a rundown of what that is and how it is installed <laughs> <laughs> sure um, I, I didn't need to know this information so so the one thing that the movie got wrong was that so this is uh this is supposedly uh real hair with real hair you can shampoo it you can style it you can do everything with it it's all all pretty much installed the same way but like real hair you're able to get it wet and stuff synthetic hair you cannot you can't 
put like heat tools on it, style it, curl it, none of that. You just have to leave it alone. So that's something that the movie did get wrong. So um, the way that it's installed, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, what's very typical with, um, I think, uh, most African-American um, styles is that they just uh, take all of their natural hair and braid it up into like a sort of a crown. And then they sew in these tracks into those braids. Um, there's a couple of other different ways to do it. Um, I've had extensions. I've never had braided ones, but it, it all hurts no matter what how you have it applied. It all hurts. Um, but uh, in this one, they they braid her hair up and then she starts sewing this weave in and she actually like gets the needle into her scalp and it's really painful and she's crying. But then when she sees herself with all of this gorgeous, long, straight, flowing hair, she's like, it was worth it. So it's very rare that I'm actually disturbed by a um, horror movie that I'm watching. <laughs> uh, but I found certain scenes in this movie to be very disturbing to me and it mostly had to do with like you know this poor woman's hair <laughs> uh so the movie starts off with like this flashback of when she was a kid and her sister is trying to help her straighten her hair she's giving her a relaxer treatment which also hurts yeah and it, so basically there's all these chemicals in, in the hair and um, it starts kind of burning her scalp and when they try to wash it out um it ends up kind of like taking a lot of the hair with it and and scarring her her scalp and you, you know just is that what the pink on the back of her head was yeah, yeah she's got a scar from it's basically a burn yeah, from a chemical it, burn it's like a chemical burn and just watching this poor little girl be tortured like that was very disturbing for me and then when we get to her as an adult the scene where she is getting you know the extensions put in and they're like they got have this like curved needle that they're literally putting through her scalp and she's like crying as it's happening. I'm, I'm I was like squirming that, in my seat. Was, is that a thing? Yes. Th they go through the scalp. No, they're not. Supposed they, just, to. they just go through the braid. Yeah, right? they're they're not supposed to actually get it in your skin. Yeah, but for whatever reason, for this movie, they went through the, the skin I mean, of the scalp. It was an accident. Well, or the I stylist think, is in on it because all that hair yeah. is fucking well, well, obsessed. Well, the stylist is in on yeah. it, but the whole thing about this hair is that it it thrives on blood, mm -hmm. and so like it would make sense that it would you know want to go to the scalp. And she has the, the the treatment that's made out of pig's blood. Pig's blood yeah. that they're supposed to rub into it to kind yeah. of satiate its uh, blood, blood lust. Blood yeah. lust. But it's not enough, and the no. and the hair has to. And there's like witches and stuff, and uh, yeah. yeah. So this is based on like an old folklore um, book that uh, her her dad has, and he's like, "Here's this book. You should read it." And she comes across the story of the girl with the moss hair. And basically, um, this uh, slave girl had um, picked up a bunch of moss and put it on her head as though it were long hair. And like, you know, all of us girls have pretended to have long hair when we were kids. Like, we, I used to put um, like a towel on my head and pretend I had like long, luxurious locks or like a blanket or sometimes a pair of pants. And you you just do stuff like that when, when you're a little girl. So this little girl, uh, she uses moss. And um, in the story, I forget exactly what happens, but the moss is evil and it possesses her. And uh, I, f I forget what else. Yeah, so... Um the long and short of this movie is is that um, witches. James Vanderbeek is an is the descendant of an evil plantation owner mm -hmm. who would hang um, black people from the trees on their plantation, and these trees eventually ended up growing moss that had the souls of these these people in them, and uh, he starts harvesting this moss to turn into like wigs or weaves because uh, it looks like human hair. Mm. And so this stuff is infused with the evil spirits that, um, you know, are seeking vengeance. And he's basically the evil white guy who's basically trying to um, kind of t possess the black community <laughs> by, <laughs> by, by putting this out there. And, and, he, and he like, he owns the, the culture channel yes. that, um, that they all work for. And he owns the salon that, you know, installs these things and all this stuff. And he, Wait, owned, he owned the salon too. He owned the salon and he owned the delivery service that brought like the weaves and stuff huh, to, to okay. it. So, so the, the hairstylist, um, in this movie is in cahoots with James Van. I did not get that. that yeah. Is that clear to you? Uh, it's, it's, did you have to deep dive it? I didn't like, there's literally nothing about this movie out there to deep dive into. Okay. <laughs> um, that, that's what I gathered from, oh, okay. from the ending. Of, I didn't of this get movie. that. Yeah. 
Um, and I also didn't get that because I like they talk about the um, <clears throat> they talk about the story of the moss girl and beware of the moss girl. Um, I didn't I wasn't sure if it was hair or moss because like she keeps saying like, oh, I, th it's, I think it's, it's natural. Moss. I think it's moss. OK, yeah. so that's why you can't get it wet. Yeah. And um, basically our main character, Anna, her father is like a black studies professor. Yes. And he's the one who has this, this story in this book that he gives her. Avery Brooks. Avery Brooks. Yes, um, exactly. And so um, this is how she comes to find out, you know, what's going on. And this whole movie is kind of like a metaphor for how like, like white corporate culture um, corrupts black women in particular. Yeah. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting because it, it's like another level of metaphor on, on top of like what should just just be a silly horror movie. Of the three movies that we watched this week, I feel like this one is like the one that takes itself the most seriously mm -hmm. and is most legitimately a horror movie. And it's kind of funny because you got um, James Vanderbeek uh, in this movie, you know, from Dawson's Creek. You got Usher. Usher shows up in oh, this movie. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, and Vanessa, Vanessa Williams, Williams. Yeah. you know, and I think uh, – what was, what was the last thing we saw her in? Was it Eraser? Yeah. Arnold no, Schwarzenegger. But she's, uh, she's, she's getting older, huh? Yeah, and, and they, they, <laughs> they actually make that a part of the story where she's like an aging supermodel, and uh, she basically takes over the programming for this this culture, which is kind of like BET, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is like 1989, like yeah. right when we're starting to get into like the 90s rap uh, hip hop culture. See, I, I must have blinked when they flashed what year it was at the beginning, and I know they did because I just saw it because we're yeah. replaying it. I'm like, oh, 1989. <laughs> okay, you didn't wonder why <laughs> everyone was dressing. No, I, I figured out that it was in the 80s, but I, I wasn't really sure what exactly. I was figuring 87, 88. So I was right there. Yeah, you, so. you got like the guys with like the high top yeah, hair yeah, yeah. and, it's and like, like, oh, the, the African jackets, kid and play yeah. coming mm -hmm. in, and you know, I'm waiting for a, you know. Uh, Bobby Brown and <laughs> all funniest, those kind of guys to show up. The funniest part of this movie is like how mean everyone is to the main character about her hair. And her hair's fine. You just have to like get on board with the story that her hair's so ugly. Well, her, her, hair's, her hair is uh, very um, it's a, it's not a straight. It's a short afro. She's, <laughs> she's got African-American natural hair. And it's fine. It looks terrible when she tries to like partially pin it up I mean, and do I, weird I, things with it. But I when do, she wears it natural, it's pretty. I do remember back in this time period, there was a lot of, uh, th there. I, I do remember some talk about hairstyles. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, Claire Huxtable, she has straight hair. Mm -hmm. Her hair isn't black. Well, you I know. I, it's I, just, but it was a thing. This was a real yeah. thing. And there was pressure on black women back then to, oh, yeah straighten their hair and stuff and well i i think a big part of this movie and the reason why they said it in 1989 was that in order for black culture to move into the mainstream it had to be acceptable to white audiences yes. and so like th this whole movie is kind of like about taking what was originally like you know culture mm -hmm. uh, black culture and um kind of sterilizing it for the white masses and, and james vanderbeek is kind of like the guy who embodies that within the, the guise of oh i'm i'm a champion of the black person you know so what, what's what's kind of weird to me is is i notice in my job i see a lot of people and 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 for for, for we've had a lot of a lot of a lot of black people coming through where i work here the last six months or so more than more than normal for some reason. I'm not sure why I'm not commenting on anything, but I've noticed that they all have weaves now, but they're all more, um, more braids, mm -hmm. the long kind of twisty kind of, well, what are, what are those They're just called? called braids. They're just called braids, but they're all weaves mm -hmm. and they're long, like down yeah. to their waist. Yeah. Braids are very So, common. and, and I have, I have a friend and she says those hurt like you would not believe and it's because really she has bad them. for your scalp so i'm just kind of wondering why they would do this to themselves it's still pretty. you know but they've gone from this to the other extreme it's like it's it's a it's a cultural thing i think and it's just it's weird to me it's like why would you put yourself through that much yeah and pain i, I, and I, I learned through jude while watching this movie that um you know you can't scratch uh you can't you know, get your, to your it. scalp it's very itchy yeah, yeah. and and so in, in this movie they're yeah. constantly kind of like you just gotta tap it yeah they're, tap they're it. constantly like tapping their their I head mean, because I'm, it itches i'm going bald and i'm about probably within weeks of just going of, of shaving mm -hmm. to keep the next time i come in here i might not have any hair 
on top of my head. Well, we would never know because you always wear a hat. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, look, look at this. This is. I didn't know you had that much hair. This is, well, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. But, you know, women, you don't have to torture yourselves to, for us. Um, I, I, I don't know if, unless you're doing this for yourself or whatever, but I, I, I don't get it. Listen, as it. someone who has had a fresh weave and you have never felt more beautiful when your weave is fresh, yeah. um, it hurts for sure. But everyone will compliment you. So <laughs> it's worth it. So getting back to this weave, <laughs> one of the, so like one of the common threads throughout all three of these movies is, is the, the inanimate object requires blood. Mm -hmm. And so we have scenes in this movie where like it, it soaks up the, the blood from a hamburger on a plate. Yes. But probably the most disturbing thing in this movie is when uh, it, basically goes into her pants and sops up oh. her period blood. It literally, the hair goes into her crotch, up into her, and just sucks out all the blood. And it was like, I was like, whoa. And she's like I, standing, I looking in the mirror as this is happening. And she's just in shock. Like, she has now been sexually assaulted by her own hair. I, I could have done without that scene. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was kind of gross. Yeah, it was a very gross scene. <laughs> um, and it just goes towards, like, why I think this movie is so disturbing. Like, there's just, like, a lot of really messed up concepts yeah. in this so film i i didn't really find the whole concept disturbing after watching the other two vile movies we watched this week <laughs> was this the um, last one that you watched this I, week? I watched was the last okay and it took me the longest to get through okay but I, I do feel like this one was much better much it was put together a lot better than Pro the other movies better, we watched yeah. you know um this was, one actually but, had a budget i think but the, the, i feel like this movie was about 20 minutes too long I, I really do. Yeah. It was, I don't there, disagree with you. There was there was a lot of slowness. There was a lot of stuff that just they could have just cut out. Um, I thought it was shot weird. It was very subdued in, in the color palette that it used. Okay. It looked like it was kind of shot on. Maybe Matt can get into it more, but it didn't look like it was shot to me like on normal. No, it was shot in HD or something. It just, but it just it, it looked funky to me. There was something that I didn't like about it. Um, I just I just thought it was too long. Yeah, I thought you, it was way too long. You know what's weird about the, the shooting of this is is that in like the normal scenes, um, you can tell that uh, you know it, it's very kind of traditional in, in how it, it has like a film look to it, mm -hmm. um, even though it's shot on digital. And then like in any scene where the hair comes alive and there's like special effects, it gets this flat look to it, and it and it looks like TV. And I I think that you know that's just an outgrowth of like the special effects uh, that. Um, you can't make that look yeah normal i know that they, they 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 i don't know if they were trying to make like a serious horror movie or anything about this because i know this was this was screened at cans i think last year it was and i, I don't know if how it went or anything but i did see that well it, it ended they, up they, on hulu on somebody hulu, bought you know. it well cans is a film market yeah they, they go you know you go to can to sell your movie to is it can or con it's can yeah. I don't trust you. <laughs> Depends where you're I, from. I've only been there twice. So. Uh, it has, that has no meaning. You've mispronounced people you've known for years. Okay, fine. Uh, but uh, you, you, know, you, you go to that film festival in order to sell your movie to distributors and stuff like that. Um, that's not to say that this was actually in, in competition because there's a, you know, there's a right. film competition at Cannes where you get awards and stuff like that. that was, this was not part of that. Um, but... Uh, the, like overall, this, this film I felt like took itself most seriously of the three movies that we watched, even though the the premise is, is kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it also had like I think kind of like the best characterization. Like the characters in this movie are all very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, even Vanessa Williams' character, you know, the aging supermodel who basically yeah, screw, kind of screws over her younger proteges and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, for but they give everybody reasons. like a nice backstory so that they're really grounded mm -hmm. and then it took the time to give us like lore also which i appreciated mm -hmm. yeah and uh y you know it, it's just a well put together movie um but like i said this was probably my least favorite simply because i was so like disturbed by it uh, <laughs> for the most part for me i thought that the most disturbing part was when she gets like a paper cut and the hair um yeah it goes into her finger. the hair like goes it goes in deep <laughs> and then when it like comes back out of the cut it like takes a minute it like so it was obviously so far in her finger i don't know that just was it was gross so and icky to me when her hair does its thing she basically becomes possessed by the hair yes. right 
her eyes start glowing. The souls of she, the witches who died are in the hair. Yeah, and they want to take over the body. Yes. And at, at a certain point, Vanessa Williams tries to cut her hair off, and the hair kills her by breaking her neck. And at that point, uh, the hair just takes over her body fully. And so uh, what Anna is fighting against is it's slowly kind of possessing her, and she do, and if she knows that if she tries to take it out, it's going to kill her. So um, she's basically like trapped and uh, it, it frightens the fuck out of her. Yeah. Um, so Vader, what was your least favorite part of this movie? My least, um, just the slowness of it. I thought it was built up really slow. You know, um, I, I don't know what my least favorite part about it. I mean, I, I kind of was into the whole premise of it after it got going a little bit, but man, it took, it took a good hour for me to like really start paying attention to this thing. Once once the hair started actually like whacking people, <laughs> then it, then it got interesting to me. But the whole build up, it was just it was too much. It was too long. All right, Jude, did you like this movie? Like- I did. This was a second watch for me. I've seen this twice now, and I remember the first time that I saw this, I was I was much more into it because it was it was such a surprise. The second time watching it, I'll agree with Vader. It's a little slow. Um, but it's still a hoot. And uh, I think it was really well made. I think it was really well acted. They have like, you know, the cast is great. It's a good story. Like story wise, it, it, it's good. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Um, is it an exciting watch? The first time, but probably not worth a second watch. <laughs> what was your favorite scene? Um, okay. So I really thought uh, the scene where she kills her uh ex-boyfriend uh, yeah i don't know what to call him because it was just like they were just like pals who fucked she thought they were boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> he did not um yeah he, he was actually sleeping with vanessa williams yeah, to so advance like, his career vanessa williams comes in and takes over everything that anna wants like anna wants this job and vanessa williams is she comes in and takes like her boss's position and she's like dangling this uh you could have your own show in front of her to get her to do everything. And then Vanessa Williams just keeps passing off all of Anna's ideas as her own. And then she ends up stealing her man too. <laughs> so uh, there's this scene that they're at some like party for the network and Anna sees Vanessa Williams and the guy get into a fight and Vanessa Williams takes off. And then the guy comes up to Anna and is like, Hey, uh, I always thought you were something special, sweetheart. <laughs> so he takes her back to his place. And while she's there, Anna is realizing, like, how much of a joke this was to him. Like, she really thought that this guy liked her. And it's just become very clear that he didn't like her at all. And he was just using her. And he thinks of her as kind of a, like a joke. And so they're they're banging. And she's on top. And she, like ties him up and he's like ooh sexy and she like blindfolds him and he's like ooh sexy well, well, it, well he ties her up she ties him up with her hair like her hair as she's having sex wraps around his wrists uh-huh. and he's got his blindfold and he's on. into yeah. it and then she starts um like writing him and asking him questions about Vanessa Williams's character and then just like breaks a bottle and starts stabbing him to death while she's yeah. fucking murder him. by wine bottle yeah i think maybe that's one of my issues with this movie is it it tries to take itself seriously with with everything and then but then when you get to the the hair actually doing its thing it's, it's just, ridiculous it's, it's ridiculous it's and silly. silly yeah mm-hmm. it's like are they are they telling us are they are they giving us a story about society and stuff and then we go to this stupid the wind blowing the hair around and and it's it, it turns into just a dumb, <laughs> schlocky Jason movie. Well, you know, also, I, I, the, the first kill in this movie, so she's got this really scuzzy landlord. Yeah. And he basically comes in and tries to rape her yeah. at a certain point. And the hair just, like, murders the guy. So you're rooting for and, the hair at that point. It's like, yeah, kick his ass. Yeah, so, like, they ease us into, like, the, the <laughs> hair murders. Yeah, they, they um, ease you into the evil. But uh, Anna actually, like, um, hides the body by tossing it out her window into the dumpster like four or five stories below. <laughs> and, and that's kind of like, it, it, it almost doesn't phase her. Like, like, you know, obviously like she's kind of freaked out about it. She's in shock. Yeah. Yeah. But she goes through this movie and like, like 
all these people start dying around her. Yeah. And I never feel like she has like a very kind of like realistic reaction to that. She just kind of like, oh, okay, the plot requires me to go along. So I'm just going to keep going along with it. Um, but uh, the, what, one of my favorite bits about this movie is that she has this friend who is, you know, one of the people who work in that culture. And throughout the final act of this movie, this friend just keeps getting, you know, killed by the hair over and over again. <laughs> Not really killed, like like like, like the hair almost killed. You think the yeah, hair you, you, killed her, you, you think and then that she survives, and, and, and she, she just keeps surviving. Yeah, yeah, she just keeps popping up. It's like, what's going on over here? <laughs> so like like the, you could tell that by the the time that you get to the third act of this movie, um, they're not taking themselves too seriously anymore. And in fact, the way that you defeat the hair is to get it wet. Uh-huh. Like, like that's its its weakness. And uh, I just thought that the final act of this movie was much better. Yes. Then the first two acts simply because it got to that campy stage where Right. And that's kind of where I kind of like this movie. Yeah. But so, by that time I'm checked out and don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I would say so. that I I loved half this movie. And then the rest was just kind of slow. The first time I watched it it didn't bother me. The second time I watched it it was a little harder to get through and I think I ended up falling asleep See, and I having to rewatch. I would have probably so. liked this better movie better if we had started in the old South Plantation where the, where the where the where where you, James we, where we see the, the the slaves being tortured or whatever and hung from the tree by their hair and I stuff. And I don't think that that's okay for you to say that you wanted that. No no no, <laughs> but it would have set up the movie. Uh huh. That's not what us. You you misunderstood okay. me. Okay. You can make movies like that. They're called horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know they they've shown worse stuff. Yeah, and, you wanted and some basic setup. I wanted some setup. Yeah, and then, you know, flash forward 150 years or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah to, it tried to tell the story of this yeah. through that book that and, she was instead reading. Instead, we get all this bullshit, them sitting around their family living room with every Brooks, you know, whatever. It just snore fest. It's, yeah. Let's move it along. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think that that, that would have flowed better in the movie, made it, um, I don't know, maybe made you pay attention a little more. But the way that they did tell the story, you had to, like, pay attention to, like, something that she's reading. So it was yeah, a little just, slower. Well, you, you also kind of uncovered the backstory as, as the character did, yeah. which is a pretty common trope. All right. So let's talk about final thoughts and give it a rating. Vader, what do you think about bad hair? I did not like this movie. I didn't like any of these movies today, but um, this was kind of in the middle of the other two movies we watched. I'd probably give this movie a uh, two, two out of five. Like I said, I, I found it slow and kind of monotonous, and it didn't really do anything for me until about the last 20, 25 minutes. So, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a snore fest. So the first movie today, Slacks, you gave two. Two and, second, and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Second movie. Two for this one. one was and a, one. And a big old... <laughs> <laughs> to a, to a, you know, a recliner killer, whatever the hell it was called. Killer yeah. sofa. <laughs> All right, Jude, uh, what is your um, final thoughts about bad hair and what rating would you give it? Okay. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I think that the horror aspects of it are are really good, really enjoyable, really campy. Um, and that that's like the best part of this, I think. Um, I know, I think Vader thinks that like when it, when the hair was like murdering, it, it wasn't visually, um, very well done. Is am I accurate? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty okay. close. Uh, Fair but, enough. But for me, I thought that that was the best parts of this because I like things that are very cheesy and campy. I, I know. So I enjoyed that, and the story. It's a little bit slow, but um, it it was still it was still a, a fun watch. Um, the whole the whole time I was watching these movies this week. I was going, Jude's going to really love all these movies. The whole time I was watching these this week, I kept asking Kadish, like, how many times do you think Vader's thrown up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for me, I'm going to um, give it, um, on the scale of inanimate object horror movies, <laughs> I'm going to give this a um, two and three quarters weaves. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite. Um, it, um, it was not my favorite movie that we watched this week, but... I think it was a fun watch. Vader, if this movie had had boobs in it. Nah, I don't think I still would have liked it very much. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have gotten another half star. Well, it would have gotten another half star, but it just, uh, 
I probably would have given it one and a half plus a half star <laughs> to keep it at a two. <laughs> All right. Um, so for me, it, like, this was my least favorite movie this week, simply because this movie actually disturbed me on a couple different levels. <laughs> You're so delicate. I, I really am, um, which is one of the reasons why I don't like horror movies. Um, so like, I, I feel like it's also the best written of the three movies that we watched oh, this week. Far. Yeah. yeah. And, and best acted as well. Um, the special effects were pretty cheesy. Uh, overall, it, it probably deserves like three stars, but I'm going to give it two, uh, pig's blood conditioners out of five. <laughs> uh, just because like, you know, like I was disturbed by some of the stuff in this movie, and I don't like to feel that like that. Kadish got triggered by all the blood. <laughs> there wasn't that much blood in it. <laughs> it, it, it. It wasn't blood. It, it was like the weird kind of scalp torture, and, uh, and the, the and, vagina, yeah, the, sucking the the period blood sucking and stuff if like that. If you ever want to like gross a dude out. Just have a movie about vagina blood. And you're have you ever going, seen Teeth? Huh. No, and I don't want to. <laughs> same, same here. There's a reason I've never seen that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, you can have one of your woman parties and you can watch it. <laughs> we are never watching that for the podcast. Anyway. Um, so My birthday is coming vetoed. up. Vetoed. <laughs> yeah, so um, overall, like, I, I think that this is an enjoyable movie. It's It's a Hulu exclusive, so if you have Hulu, you can watch it. So I would definitely recommend, um, you know, if you're into horror movies, check it out. Uh, if you're not into horror movies, don't bother with this one. Um, I don't like it. Uh, I, I think Slacks is a much more fun movie to watch than, than this film. Um, but uh, overall, um, you know, I think that on average, the three movies we watched, you know, for this episode deserve like, you know, three stars across the board. Um, I disagree. Uh, I, 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 I know you do, but like there, it's, it's entertaining, cheesy horror movies and that's what we got. All right, guys. So that is our discussion today for inanimate horror, uh, inanimate object horror movies and killer uh, inanimate objects, killer inanimate what a, objects. What a, what a, <laughs> what a topic what a world we live my in my goodness <laughs> yes what what type of topics will we come up with next i know i believe next week we're doing ninja movies uh but cool. uh anyway guys thanks for uh coming out for this episode of the salty nerd podcast matt vader 74 where can they find more of you they can find me at they can find me at matt vader 74 on uh twitter and instagram and uh, youtube so all right. Jude, where can they find more of you? You can find me at I am Jude 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 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Very good. And I am Matthew Kadish. You can find me on Twitter at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H. And you can also go to kadishbooks.com if you want to check out my Amazon page. And as always, everyone, thank you for joining us for movie and TV fun, pop culture fun, bad horror movie fun. And uh, stay salty, my friends. We'll catch you next week. Thank you.